we begin with hymn number 662, Onward Christian Soldiers.
mercy has given his son to die for you. And for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the intro. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In you, your righteousness, deliver me. For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the seal, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed. 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben. 12,000 from the tribe of Gad. 12,000 from the tribe of Asher. 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali. 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh. 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon. 12,000 from the tribe of Levi. 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar. 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun. 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph. 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes? And from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. And also from 1 John, the third chapter. See what kind of love the Father has given to us? that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are children, God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in Him purifies himself as He is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise. falsely on my account. 
Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. against 
those who are following Jesus of Nazareth. In addition to that, Christians are suffering the regular diseases common to man. Influenza, typhoid, leprosy, and all other manner of maladies of the flesh. Still further, followers of Jesus are finding that even as they believe in Christ as their Savior, they suffer with sin in their own lives. And Satan works on them, fanning, fanning their guilt into a blaze to harm them. In fact, they find that the onslaught of the deceiver, Satan, all the more intense for those who trust in Jesus rather than those who follow the devil. Yes, the church is, the church at large in every place is suffering mightily. John can't go to these congregations in, the per in person to care for them because he has been banished to the island of the populace, sent there himself as punishment for proclaiming Jesus as Savior of the world. Now, we might think that being on a Mediterranean island would be good, but on Potmos, there is no regular benefit of agriculture, regular food and drink, regu no regular shelter, and regular association with people. The chances of him dying of starvation or thirst, accident, or exposure and disease are much higher. Suffering and trouble are part of every day on Potmos. The Lord allows John there to see a vision of the world from the other world side. He sees a vision of the world, of history, of Satan, of the church, and of heaven as well. The vision is recorded by John as he is told to do and to send to the churches. God reveals him to him reality. The way things really are. Not the way the world thinks they are, but the way they really are. And how they will be in the days to come. We call this revelation, this vision, the revelation of Jesus Christ. There are plenty of scary things going on in this vision, aren't there? There's angels, both good and evil angels. There is Satan and the great beast that pursues the church of God who are real people. Over and over, seven times there are different aspects of human history presented in all the horror and evil that is stacked against the Christians living in that day and the Christians of all time. The scenes described were horrendous and filled with bizarre things and threats and dangers at every hand. John writes what he sees in his mind's eye as the Lord unravels the history of Christ's church living in a sinful and corrupted world. In the chapter before us this morning, John describes a time when the angels will come and judge the earth and bring the consequences of man's sin, your sin and mine. They will do battle with the wicked world and bring judgment upon it. But there is the church in our reading described as 144,000 souls saved. The number 144,000 is a figurative number. 12 times 12 times 10 cubed. It re represents the fullness of the church of God, whom he has purchased back from sin, death, judgment, and the devil. While all this destruction of the world for sin is going on, there is an audience before the throne of God in heaven. God sits there in perfect judgment. 
There is his, his, the Savior. The Lamb of God is there. And all visible and invisible creatures, uh, uh, invisible creatures, and those saved by God as God's own children. This large number stands before the throne of God and sings praises and thanksgiving to God for his salvation brought forth through this land. God is most certainly glorified. There is a multitude from all over the earth, all kinds of different people, with the separations removed, they are all together, standing confidently before the throne, dressed in white robes. All the same. No grade, no, no one greater than another, all there by grace. Their time of suffering and anguish is over. And they are rejoicing in the presence of the mighty God and His Son, Jesus Christ. They are dressed in white, waving palm branches in celebration, just like Palm Sunday. It's the very picture of heaven. And there are the people of God saved in heaven. John describes it. But it's really beyond our imagination. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They made it. The righteous souls have been brought home and the promise of God fulfilled. They are there in heaven. Excuse me. Again in that blessed presence of God and all the saints. They are with the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven as we sing. With God the Father, God the Son, the Lamb, that lamb crucified for the sins of the whole world. And these standing before them are the holy ones. The saints. That's what saint means. Holy ones. The holy ones of God. Saved at home. John sends this writing to the seven churches. Those still living in great tribulation. Those with disease. Those with fears. And dangers all around. Those he writes to who have seen their brothers and sisters in the faith die. And sometimes in horrendous ways. Torn apart by animals in some instances. Or mobs of soldiers for a public spectacle. And these people know that they too will die soon. John sends this letter to Christians who are hiding from the Jews and from the Romans. John sends it to Christians, a letter to the congregations with people who have had to bury their loved ones, their aged, their children, and those cut down by death in the prime of life. And for what purpose does John write? To assure them that heaven is the home of the faith. <laughs> Jesus revealed that God keeps his promises and brings his people home with shouts of joy and thanksgiving. Alleluia. Paul, or John sends the message to the soldiers of the cross who are under fire, under attack by the forces of evil on the earth and also forces of evil in the heavenly realm. What a glorious picture. And what a strange comment that these are those who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Now if you would do that with a regular lamb, your robes would be crimson, the color of sin and death. And yet the saints in heaven have white robes Purity and holiness covering them. 
and showing them to be holy, the holy ones, the saints of God. And just so the church has set this text apart to be read to you also on All Saints Day. It is for remembering God's promise that those who believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. The church of God for centuries has set apart a day to remember those who have lived as Christians, suffering and bleeding and starving and being put to death. They all died under the cover of the blood of the Lamb, our own Jesus. Even as the church suffered, suffered all these things, she read the account of what John saw before the throne. The redeemed of Christ, very much alive, not just alive, but at peace and singing with great joy, glorifying God in the presence of angels, and they themselves glorified by God as those who have come out of the great tribulation. This is a Christian story. A story of a Savior who suffered for the lost ones, that he might call them back and be their shepherd and their God. No longer wounded and broken, those or suffering little lambs, this scene is the fullness of God's promise to you through the blood of the Lamb poured out for you Christ made you his holy ones. True saints, not saints as taught by some, who have supposedly earned their place in heaven and their own righteousness and declared to be saints by some church council. But real saints, real righteous people, made holy and righteous, baptized into the very blood of this Lamb, which covers them in the righteousness of Jesus. Your Savior, Jesus. This is your story. And it has been the story for Frida in this past year, and Alvin, and Myron, and now in this last week, her. Or perhaps some of your loved ones have been called home. Your parents, your children, Aunts and uncles, whatever happened to them, this text is a picture of you when your beauty on this earth that is corrupted by sin and death is complete. The vision is a picture of you gathered with all the faithful whom Christ has washed white in the baptism into his blood. Who are they? You know. They are the blessed redeemed of God, called in life, sanctified, and though living lives in a suffering world, God has claimed them to be His own through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit, you are such blessed souls. One day you too will stand before the throne, praising Him and the Lamb, waving palm branches in the celebrate celebratory victory over sin, death, Satan, and the grave. No boats, no trophies, no earthly rewards are in the picture. No stuff, dear heads, that we might acquire this week or next. There will be no human court to determine if you are sinless or not. God declared you so already in your baptism. And every time you come before this altar now, repenting and believing in his promise of salvation through faith in his Son. The righteousness of Christ is washed on you in the saving water of baptism. And God feeds you here with real spiritual food. Here in this place, a holy meal for those made holy by the blood of Jesus. Promised in God's own word. This is the Christian story. Life, faith, redemption, death of the body, unless Christ comes first. But only for a little while. In the meantime, saints are dwelling in the presence of their God 
and the King. And we are in His presence today. On the last day, the bodies of all will come out of the grave, from out of the ground, and be reunited with their souls. The unrighteous, those who did not believe during earthly life in their Savior, in the Savior Jesus Christ, will rise to condemnation forever in hell. But the story God gives, your story, is what John describes in his letters to Christians about eternity and the assurance of eternal life for the sake of the blood of the Lamb. Resurrection for you. If you are not baptized or are unsure about this promise, please call me or come to me and let me explain what God has done for you. And we'll see in God's word of promise, the Holy Scriptures, the great promise of life everlasting and a wonderful reunion in heaven. This congregation has been given a gift. This funeral pall. The pall is a covering for the caskets of believers. It portrays the righteousness of Christ, clothing Christians, even as the body lies in death. The golden cross proclaimed Christ's work on Calvary for the sins of the whole world. And the white cloth covering every sin and a reminder of the white robe of holiness, one for you in heaven. This ball is for your use, if you would like, at your funeral or the, the funeral of your loved ones buried here. Again, only if you should choose to use it. It's like a full military dress for the soldier of the cross. Sins forgiven, record as white as snow. We'll dedicate it to our use in a few minutes. And now, verse 16 and following from our text. They shall have hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Let it be so. Amen and Amen. And now may the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We rise. <coughs>
Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, faithful God, we commend ourselves, our body and souls, and all things into your keeping. In your righteousness, deliver us from all that would harm the body and assault the soul. Lord, in your mercy, righteous God, bless all ministers of the gospel and the congregations committed to their care, that no comfort of Christ's sacrifice and the joy of his resurrection may so that the comfort of Christ's sacrifice and the joy of his resurrection may be proclaimed to all people, especially to those who grieve their sin and mourn their dead. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we know your deep love for us, for if you have called us your own children, deepen the love of children for their parents and parents for their children. Strengthen fathers and mothers in their vocations, that they may raise their children in a way that they should go. Hear the prayers of those who long for families. And also any expectant mothers and their little ones. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, bless all in authority over us, especially those who work to bring, to bring peace and justice, that they may be inclined to your will and walk according to your commands. Let us also, in this election time, be righteous and holy, that we would speak and do what would be right and edifying in your, uh, in your word. Grant wisdom to our citizens, heal the bitterness in our nation, and give courage and confidence to our leaders. Lord, in your mercy, O oh God, you are the rock and fortress in our distress. Hear the prayers for those who are sick, suffering, recovering from injury, or in sorrow. We pray for Sheila, Becky, Judy, Marcia, and Elwood, Emily, Beth, Delmer, Nicole, Kelly, Judy, Laverne, Sophie, Carla, Reverend Eric Calvert, Reverend Lee Wisroff, Harold, Marcella, Reverend Tom Eckstein, Dave, Stan, Dawn, Allegra, Betty, Tracy, Emma, Reverend Helen Eppett, Rodney, Elmer, Layton, Chloe, Bob, Orville, Ava, Carolyn, Betty, and Christina. Pray also for Erna, B, Dallas, and Monica, Orlean, Loretta, Christine, and Vi, who re reside in our local care centers. Bless all the pastors and congregations of our LCMS North Dakota District. Continue to bless our large print work center and the Dakota Hope Plan. Bless the international missions of the district. We pray especially for those children in Kenya and ask that you would send them good things both for this life and for the life to come. Be with our military personnel, law enforcement, rescue workers, medical personnel, and all who serve us in difficult or dangerous occupations. We pray for the family of Bertha Sandow as she was called home to heaven uh, this past week. Please keep Bertha's family in your prayer, in, in your care. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. grant all who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son that they may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. eternal Father, though death still claims our mortal bodies, you have raised us up with Christ, that we may pass through death to our joyful resurrection, and to the great reunion with those who have died in the faith, and now rest from their labor. Receive our thanks for all the saints, and especially for Frida, Alvin, Myron, and Hertha. Bring us also at last to the place of everlasting life and life. We may see you face to face 
and live in your presence forevermore. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The offering will be received.
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship. With the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
You have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the last day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. upon you and give you peace. Please be seated. We conclude with hymn number 672, Jerusalem the Golden.